asked him what they are, they would tell you they Haitians. You ask the white people where they from, man, you get all kind of answers. Oh, well, my heritage is German. Mine is Finland. Mine is Swedish. Mine is Danish. Mine is, I mean, they go on and on and on and on and on and on. That includes the white people who think that they're Indians. <laughs> anyway, it's all amazing. Blonde hair, blue eye, but the Indians. Utterly remarkable. But anyway, um, but then when you turn around and you start going and asking these black folks here in America that has had roots and generations in America, where'd you come from? Oh, we know what the, the Europeans have been trying to tell us. The Europeans have been trying to tell black people, oh, you're Africans. No, we ain't. We're not Africans because if that was the case, then why did Africans enslave other Africans? They don't do that. Not to a, a foreign nation. No, we are descendants of the ancient Hebrew Israelites who have lost an identity because our identity has been trumped. Our identity has been taken over by people of another nation and they have given us names. They have given us surnames. They have given us and told us what our culture was and what it means. We've been stripped from everything, our heritage. Uh, matter of fact, it was against the law for my people to read and write. To read and write. Mind you, sitting there in a culture that if, if check this out, that um, my people, my mom and dad and them had to endure the day of Jim Crow and stuff that, that they couldn't even go into a restaurant. And if they had certain faucets, they had a white faucet, black faucet, colored bathrooms, white bathrooms. I mean, can you imagine all that? And look at us here today. So now we have all this diversity and, 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 and all these changes that are going on. And in the midst of all this diversity and all these changes, nobody's really speaking too much truth like Pastor Dowell is because I just come right down the middle. I don't give a damn what color truth is, be it black, white, blue, purple, green, yellow, or brown. I'm going to tell the truth because truth always sets free in a lie binds. I said all that to get to this point right here. When they ask me where I come from, I tell them I can't, I don't have no nation because I, I actually, I know, I know exactly that I fit the prophecies of the book and my people. We are the scattered Israelites. One reason why you know is because watch this. Most of you who are in the Pentecostal religion, the apostolic religion out there, most of you have no idea of the history of even that. I mean, white men have taken credit for every damn thing under the sun here in America. And the black people, all you've done is just, just um, I've been sharecroppers and, 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 and cut down sugarcane. That's all you're good for. Slaves, bucks, winches. That's, that's all you've been good for your whole existence. All right? But watch this. Watch this now. Listen very closely. I sit up here, and I have watched this. A proud people. Um, I've had guns drawn on me when I was a little bitty boy. In a, a teenage, I call it a little bitty boy. I'm a man now. Ain't nobody gonna draw no damn gun on me. Get away with it now. I promise you that. Um, and now I'm even trained. If you draw a gun on me as close as they were, I know I'd take that damn gun. And anyway, let me just calm down for a second. Let me just take it. Let me calm down for a second. Mm -hmm. Let me gather myself. That was a black man by the name of William Seymour. Somehow, some way, after the apostles, after the acts of the apostles, the power of the Holy Spirit. To where people were getting filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, as is spoken of in um, in prophecy Joel two twenty eight, uh, Isaiah twenty eight verse eleven, um, as spoken of in First Corinthians twelve and First Corinthians fourteen, as is also spoken of um, over in Acts chapter two verse thirty eight and uh, John chapter seven verse thirty eight and thirty nine, uh, Acts chapter four um, verses. Um, uh, no, at, yeah, Acts chapter 10, excuse me, uh, I'm, I'm distracted right now, Acts chapter 10, um, you, you have Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 48, Acts 19, uh, verses um, 1 through 8, I can go on and 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 on, I can go on and on and on about it, but there was a black man by the name of William Seymour, who, um, he, um, was the pioneer of the Azusa Street Revival. Now, mind you, what I'm getting ready to say is very important. Because ever since the second century, after all the apostles and those 
who have been a couple of generations after the apostles have been died off, in comes Rome. That's why I keep telling you. Uh, when Daniel and the prophets talked about Rome, everybody constantly knows it's to revive Roman Empire, and then they would go um, from the political arena to the original, to a religious arena. And that's why I keep telling y'all, even still today, Rome is still ruling. Why you think all the heads of state, as soon as they turn around and they get so-called um, in the office of president, the first thing they do is they go over to Rome. They, it's on their agenda. They dress in black. All of them wives who would never wear a head covering when they get in front of that pope, they put on a head covering. The woman, women put on a head covering. They dress in black. And they get a private audience with the pope. And they bow down and kiss his ring and call him Holy Father. Even though Matthew 23 verse 9 tells you totally contrary to that. And totally they don't care. But there was a black man by the name of William Seymour that ushered in of the Azusa Street Revival that actually after so many uh, centuries of the medieval time and dead seasons, when the power of Jesus wasn't even mentioned, centuries of nothing you heard about the Holy Spirit, nothing even written about the power, healing of the sick, the raising of the dead, the casting out of devils, the laying on of hands, the people getting filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You hear all these people, John Wesley, John Calvin, Martin Luther, all these white theologians, all these white scholars, nobody's speaking about this power. Then all of a sudden comes William Seymour, black man out of California. All of a sudden, the prophecy of the scriptures being fulfilled. What is that? That Joel said he will pour out his spirit in the last days. And they start speaking in tongues, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Then all of a sudden, up pop, pops up all these denominations. Um, what they call them? Apostolic, Pentecostals, and then they diverse and divide all different types of flavors. But all of that was started by a black man who in the annuals and fullness of time, the Most High God said, it's time to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Just like it says in Jeremiah 31, 31. And it's here, happening today. So I full well know what I'm up against. I just got finished debating a so-called a white theologian who's supposed to be a noted theologian up in the Green Bay, Wisconsin area. I debated him on the tenets of Christianity, which they ain't even mentioned in the Bible, Christmas and Easter. Go check it out. Pastor Dow versus Ron Young, Christmas and Easter debate. And I made that theologian look like a kindergarten. It was sad. I, I actually felt sorry for him for one time. Then I regathered myself and said, you know what? I need to pulverize and pound this truth even more so. Just so people can get delivered from all these fabricated lies. And then to sit and listen to him talk is just nonsensical. I couldn't believe that people still sitting there under that mess. But I understand. It makes perfect sense. Because Jesus said, the blind will lead the blind and they both fall into the ditch. And they become leaders of the blind. And so now, here I am, Pastor Dow. Healing the sick, cleansing the leper, raising the dead, casting out devils, laying hands on people, people getting filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All this stuff that the Bible talks about. And you know what? Even, even amongst my own people, they totally ignore it. Because it goes against their doctrine, their theology. But you know what? The, the remnant is still being poured out of all of this. And there are people out there, they don't care what color Pastor Dow's skin is. They just know that the spirit of truth is leading them and guiding them, and they have had a newfound spark and fire found in them like never before. They have discovered the real Yahshua HaMashiach or the real Jesus the Christ. Paul even wrote about that there will be people coming and preaching about a false Jesus and a false Christ. And you know what? Satan's religion, Christianity. Now notice, I did not speak against Jesus. I spoke against a religion. Go carefully study and look at it and see if it's not Satan's religion. Because there's not one damn thing about that damn religion, as damnable as it is. There's not one damn true thing about it that actually originates from the book. There are three main pillars, Christmas, Easter, and Sunday, can easily all be condemned by the Bible, both Old and New Testament. And you got to ask yourself, what the hell is going on? What y'all doing out there if y'all are, are, are worshiping the so-called creator in vain, thinking that you can coexist 
with him and cause other deities to come in. I told y'all a long time ago, the worship of old antiquity of all these wicked pagan cultures is the same thing going on today right now. It's just that the names have changed. The worship has remained the same. And of course, I understand Galatians 4.16, I become a lot of people's enemy because I tell you the truth. There's going to be a weeping howl. It's going to go all throughout this land and all throughout the universe in the angles of time when you find out you've been lied to. Not only about the people, but the Messiah, even Yahweh himself, God himself. He said he's going to break and snap asunder the, the arrogancy and the pride of men. It's going to be bad. At least one thing about Pastor Dow. You know what I've done? I've loved you enough to tell you the truth. Amen. I have. And going to continue to keep loving you enough to tell you the truth. Well, anyway, you deserve the truth. And the truth straight away. I hope that y'all have a wonderful day. I understand that some people are going to twist and warp my words, my intentions. Nevertheless, the truth still stands. It still remains, though, don't it? Pass this video around. Tell them to check it out. See what I'm saying is so. Jesus was not a white man, and neither were the apostles, and neither were the ancient Hebrew Israelites. And remember Isaiah, the prophecy, that the actual face of Jacob would never, ever wax pale.